let's see if you can draw your best sperm cell and your best egg cell. So really quick, not much explanation going on here, except when you look at that, look at that, how beautiful that is. And uh, what's important for a sperm cell? Well, a sperm cell has to deal with quite a lot of things. For first, first off, when it ventures on its journey, it's going to be encountered, uh, it's going to encounter very acidic environments. The female reproductive system, the vagina, particularly acidic, uh, maybe pH 5, between 5 and 6, primarily to fend off bacteria and prevent infection, but sperm cells don't like it either. So that's why sperm cells are uh, released with semen that contains alkaline fluid there, alkaline fluid to help neutralize the environments and increase their chances of actually winning and getting to the uh, end of the race to fertilize the ovum. They also need to pack lunch with them, but they can't carry that much. They have plenty of mitochondria to help them move around, uh, but also provided in the semen is plenty of fructose secreted by the seminal vesicles. The seminal vesicles will provide that, and the fructose can be used uh, by the mitochondria to do cellular respiration to produce a whole lot of ATP to help them keep wagging this tail. So this tail actually goes uh, pretty far out. So use this scale here to try to figure out how long that is. The acrosome is a cap. It's part of the acrosome reaction. When this gets removed, there are enzymes containing... Uh, these enzymes are uh, protein digesting or enzymes called proteases, which will help them to digest a hole through the outer layer of the ovum when they're trying to actually get in there. Haploid nucleus, uh, how many chromosomes are in here? Can you guess? 23 for humans, the plasma membrane, okay, we like to say that instead of cell membrane, and a few measurements here, centriole, helical mitochondria, uh, long tail, and a few microtubules. This, if you can understand some of this, that's okay. I'm not going to go into so much detail with the structure, but you should be able to draw a sperm cell and then label some of the main significant parts here for a few marks. Protein fibers to strengthen the tail. Uh, the arrangement of the microtubules, you'll see this when you're understanding, when you learn about the structure of cells and the role that microtubules play in there as well. Okay, egg. Looks like this. Look at all these surrounding follicle cells. So same thing, haploid nucleus, 23 chromosomes. The cytoplasm uh, is here. Remember, due to the unequal division of cytoplasm in the production of egg cells, you know, producing... Uh, polar bodies that are left over, you end up with a very large cell called the egg cell. And the egg cell, the human egg cell is one of the largest cells in the body, while the human sperm cell is one of the smallest um, in the body. Here's remnants of that first polar cell from the first unequal division. All the cytoplasm went into this one. This one just degrades overall. So this doesn't play a huge role here. Plasma membrane, the innermost line. Be careful how you layer that. A layer of follicle cells, which are kind of uh, like chaperone cells. They're playing a role. Um, these will uh, later get broken down um, and can form the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum is going to continue to secrete uh, progesterone as needed to maintain the uterine lining. The outer gel here, the outer layer, is made up of, zo of glycoproteins. This is the layer, the zona pellucida, that has to be digested through. And only one sperm cell out of the 300 million or so that are racing to get here, only one will actually be able to digest through. And then once you get through, then there's another reaction that happens. You'll see that in the fertilization video to help prevent other sperm cells from actually coming in. So uh, if you can sketch a diagram that looks like that, make sure your sperm cell and egg cell don't just look like a circle in a line. That would be um, like what a third grader could do. Cortical granules, that's important in that particular reaction, reaction that's going to actually close down the outside and prevent entry to future sperm cells. That's called the cortical reaction. So you're gonna see that a little bit later. Okay, uh, fantastic. When you have a diagram that you're supposed to draw in pencil, something like this, don't go crazy drawing all of these. Hopefully you understand that. It's not a art uh, competition. Draw the general layers, make sure you can uh, label the plasma membrane and everything like that. For these follicle cells outside, I might just draw a line around and say this layer contains follicle cells as opposed to drawing, I don't know, 250 little small cells, okay? Uh, you're not going to get points for that and you're just going to waste all your time and then cry 
later. Okay, that was a short one.